with Diggs man to the mid lane. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. As we round it out, I am down on stage with Shifter of Team Dignitas, bringing out the Diana with the smite in the mid lane this time. We saw the Ezreal pick coming through. You have a big smile on your face. How are you feeling in the game? Um, feeling pretty good. I think no one's really expecting the Diana mid of smite, so I think they're, they're really caught off guard, so it's just kind of funny. <laughs> so is this something you even brought out in scrims, or kind of something you had in the back of your mind, used it in solo queue a few times, and was able to sneak it in? Um, at first, I tried it in Soul Key. I was like, damn it, it's really good. Because <laughs> everyone started with the Ezreal Smite, and then I was just thinking about champions that would work with Runeclave, and Dana just popped in my head. I tried his scrims, it was really successful, and just busted out here. All right, Shifter, you guys have ha been having an incredible season right now, and you've even made a few changes along the way to the jungle. What about this Team Dignitas this season made those changes kind of go so smoothly, and why were you guys able to come out so strong? Um, most important thing is that I think we're just all friends, so... The Koreans, obviously, they mingle together. Me and Helios, we do it a lot in the past. Kiwi's just a really outgoing guy, really easy to talk to. So it was just easy for all of us to bond together and just be a team. All right, well, team's doing very well. It's tied second place with Team Liquid right now. You face them tomorrow for the game of the week, both of you at 8-3. and three. What are you thinking about that matchup? Final question. Uh, it's going to be a really hard match. I think Phoenix is probably one of the best mids in NA right now, and I respect them a lot. So I think it's going to be a really, really important match for us. All right, well, go get some rest for that important matchup. Congratulations on the win. Best of luck in the rest of the season. We're going to throw it down to the analyst desk one more time to close out the day. Thank you, Riv. And off the bat here, I actually want to talk about teammate because at the bottom of the table, we have this race for seventh, kind of, just avoiding having to play for your life in the LCS between teammate, enemy, yeah. Cloud9, and TDK. And teammate seems to really be suffering from the absence of Slushy. Yeah, none of those four teams actually picked up a win here today at all. And I don't even know if it's a it's kind of a race for seventh. I feel like it's kind of a get down below me. It's not like I I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you, right? It's and that's both. the person who faces auto relegation. It's both, right? Because yet tenth is obviously the worst auto relegation. Seventh may end up being a blessing because you don't have to play mm -hmm. any of the challenger teams. I think the challenger teams are pretty strong in the split uh, by and large. So. It's, it's an unfortunate thing that's happened in the standings today where they've spread pretty significantly. Even the last playoff spot, which would currently be held by Team Impulse, won today. So every team we mentioned is at least three games out of the playoffs with now uh, seven to go. So yeah. they need significant ground to even think about playoffs. It's, yeah, like you said, about avoiding relegations. And so when we look at this teammate roster, in the absence of Slushy, we've talked about who's going to step up for them. And you, you, would, think, you would think to look to Cali Trolls, right, as yeah. the shot caller. But his, his, his play in these recent games has been somewhat disappointing. Yeah, you, you kind of need a rock to replace Slushy. Cali Trolls has always been a wild card, and Porpoise was kind of the guy alongside Slushy that was making those calm plays and coming out on top sometimes. So Cali Trolls doesn't really have anybody to keep him grounded, so he can try and make those plays. And then they just camp Cali Trolls. The shot caller, you were talking about that, you start off 0-2 on one of your best champions, Aurelia Top, from being camped, you're definitely going to have that affecting your shot calling and the way you're making these plays. You saw him make very aggressive plays in the middle, and then it became that desperate point. And that seemed like the Dignitas mm -hmm. plan was camp the shot, the shot caller and just put him on tilt. Make it so that he can't make those level-headed plays. Yeah. The other thing in this game is Dignitas is really solidifying themselves as a playoff team. Yeah. Yes. Because last split, this would have been one of those games where they're thinking, all right, better <laughs> time to pick up a win. We, we need this one, boys. But now it's just kind of like, okay, let's crush this inferior team and let's try and go back for first place because they're only one game out. And well, is let's, this, oh, let's sorry. try something new. Let's come in with a game plan and let's execute on it. I thought that was brilliant from Dignitas. They did multiple things this game that I thought were really good. Diana Smite mid trying something else out in a game that you know every game does count in this season because there's so little of them, yeah. but they're still able to pull out a victory in a very clean fashion while doing that because they weren't just trying something. They were trying something in a plan, and I love that. And especially nice to see off the back end of a loss to TDK because we did have some questions <laughs> about yeah. how they would deal with that loss, one they may have expected to win. And I do, I like the Diana pick. I kind of wanted to just explore that a little bit more because we've always considered Shifter to be somewhat more of a passive laner. Well, Diana has no choice but to go in, and it also serves to be another form of initiative for this team and we yeah. talk about their punish game their ability to make split-second decisions I feel like Diana only supports that notion yeah and that's two games in a row now where shifter hasn't had a CS discrepancy so maybe some of this has to go into jungler trust uh, or just general trust because 
Schichter's been on some bad teams. He's definitely developed some trust issues in his time in LCS, but if he has faith in the team to follow up, if he has faith in Gamsu to alt in after him, if he has vision control faith from the rest of his team, then he's more free to play aggressively in lane and make aggressive plays. So I agree the Diana pick was nice, but it was mainly because he had the support of the rest of his team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Diana is not just somebody who's just solo carries a team. You have, yeah. to, in order to solo carry as Diana, you need people to set up vision around you so you're safe during the early game, and then make picks later. And then they were like, all right, let's just actually use it as a team fighter, and that was great because they just plowed down the middle with it because they had created this advantage off of their early moves. Yep, this is a dignitas that I'm excited to see go up oh, yeah. against Team Liquid tomorrow. Now, with that, the smoke has cleared from our five, ga five games. So